Imagine if I told you that five years ago, a YouTuber named Jake Paul would be boxing in the ring and defeating MMA legends and filling arenas. Would you believe that? Fast forward to 2022, and Jake Paul has defeated the greatest MMA artist of all time. I respect this man. I'm still gonna knock him out, but respectfully knock him out. Jake Paul, who began his career on YouTube, never dreamed that at age 25, he would be facing his childhood hero, UFC great Anderson Silva, in a boxing match. The youngster who made videos for Vine has come a long way. <laughs> we'll find you. <laughs> Good luck, click. Jake Paul's character as the problem child always added much needed spice to his videos. The discovery of boxing, though, would prove to be a game changer for him, even though Jake's brother also pursued a career in boxing. Jake was the one who took it seriously. His ultimate objective was to compete for a professional belt, but he knew he had to take care of business against more powerful opponents. After defeating the former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley twice, including a knockout. The time to step up and oh! and Ben Askren, who also got slept in the first round by Paul. He decided to compete with the great Anderson Silva. He has never been defeated in the ring and was going to enter the ice with a very lethal striker. Just by observing Paul's behavior during the pre-fight rituals, he realized he might lose this one. For the infamous problem child, the journey might have been full of challenges, but the rewards have been great. I'm sure the internet just exploded because the problem child is now 3-0 with three knockouts. Jake Paul's life would have drastically changed after his decisive victory over Anderson Silva. This was the biggest and most important fight of his career. Paul defeated the UFC legend after an intense eight rounds of war. All three judges scored the fight in Paul's favor. You just beat one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time, fair and square. But after the win, when the footage from the fight circulated on social media, it gave rise to a great deal of controversy. Some fans claimed that Silva's knockdown by Paul in the final round was faked because of the way the Brazilian landed after being caught. Fans claimed furiously that Jake Paul's unanimous decision win over Anderson Silva was rigged, as slow motion footage from their fight appears to show the UFC legend falling to the canvas after a weak jab and rear hook. However, footage of the moment was circulating from one specific angle, which makes it look as if the hook didn't even land. But another clip makes it clear that Jake did connect with his right. As there was no evidence or plausibility to support the conspiracy, the fans were left to decide if their fight was actually rigged or not. Perhaps it was not the first time that the fans encountered suspicion about boxing fights. His second fight against Woodley where he knocked him out unconscious was also a hot topic among many boxing experts. The majority of the people thought that Tyron Woodley was looking for one last payday as he was already in the twilight of his career. That wasn't the first time that the sport of boxing has been stained with allegations of rigging. The corruption in boxing dates back to the days when Jake LaMotta fought Billy Fox back in 1947. This fight has still turned one of the most corrupt boxing fights in history. Apart from that, there have been many fights that makes an individual think that something must have gone on behind the scenes after the final result unfolded. Here we are going to have a look at some of the biggest fights in boxing history that were rumored to be rigged. Known as the most controversial clash for the heavyweight championship in history, Muhammad Ali, born Cassius Clay, knocked out Sonny Liston and retained the heavyweight championship with a stunning right hand punch in 1965. Muhammad Ali was the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. He was highly acclaimed, earning money and fame in his profession of pugilism. 22 years of age, unbeaten. 19th straight going for all the marbles in the box. Fighting for the first time with Liston in Miami in 1964, Cassius Clay shocked the odds makers by dethroning world heavyweight boxing champ Sonny Liston in a seventh round technical knockout. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe! Liston injured his shoulder and failed to answer the seventh round bell. A few conjectured that Liston faked the injury and threw the fight, but there was no real evidence. After winning the heavyweight title, Cassius Clay announced his allegiance to the Nation of Islam cult and its leader, Elijah Muhammad, before changing his name to Muhammad Ali. Clay was not my name. Once we understand the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, coming to knowledge of myself. Moving into 1965, a rematch was set for Boston between the two fighters. Liston trained harder than he had ever trained before since he wanted to reclaim his world heavyweight title and release his frustration. But unfortunately, Ali suffered a hernia on Friday, the 13th of all days, which was three days before the originally scheduled bout. So it was called off. Now many observers and boxing experts believe that Liston would have actually won if the original day hadn't gone ahead. 
That something we'll never know. In addition to this, Liston's manager, Jack Nylon, was being investigated, among others, for fixing the first fight. Also, the FBI was investigating a possible fix for the second fight as well, so there were rumors that maybe this rematch was going to be fixed now. The intense and violent atmosphere surrounding the event was blamed for the low attendance of 2,500 in Maine's first heavyweight championship match. Paul E. knocked Liston out in the first round with a right shot to the head that became renowned as the Phantom Punch. After more than 10 seconds on the mat, Liston called time and declared Ollie the champion. A large portion of the crowd either didn't see or afterward claimed they didn't see the punch that knocked Liston out. Others were adamant that the punch was hardly a phantom. Various assumptions have been made in the years since the fight ended to explain, but fans either can't or don't want to accept that Ollie beat Liston. Some people think that Liston, an ex-convict turned mob enforcer, owed money to the mafia and threw the fight so that organized crime figures could make a lot of money from betting. This extra income would therefore be able to pay off Liston's huge gambling debts. Interesting stuff all around. The bottom line is that the Ollie versus Liston rematch has never been uncontroversial in all these years, and it will be remembered as a surreal episode of infinite strangeness, indeed the most controversial match in boxing history ever. The fight between Mike Tyson and Bruce Seldon is another fight, regarded as one of the most controversial fights in the history of pro boxing. In a battle marred by controversy, Mike Tyson faced Bruce Seldon on September 7, 1996, for the WBA heavyweight title. It's showtime! With the WBA heavyweight championship of the world scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. At the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Paradise, Nevada, where the fight took place, Tyson quickly knocked out Seldon in the first round. The bout lasted less than two minutes, making it one of the quickest heavyweight fights in the history of pro boxing. Right after the bout ended, the spectators began chanting fix, insisting that Seldon had intentionally dived to the ground. What was more shocking was that rapper Tupac Shakur, who attended the fight, was fatally shot hours later. In the fight, at the sound of the bell, Tyson came out swinging, hitting Seldon with a series of heavy punches. Scheduled for 12, and Tyson comes right out, right into Bruce Seldon. Mike Tyson knocked Seldon down with a grazed left hand on Seldon's upper head one minute into the fight. Seldon got back up, but Tyson fired another left hook almost immediately, knocking him out again. The referee stopped the fight this time because Seldon was on shaky legs. First round. One minute and nine seconds were left, and he was not going to weather the storm. Following the battle, the dissatisfied crowd began yelling fix. Fix, saying that they believed Seldon intentionally dove to help Mike Tyson win the heavyweight title. Commentator Jim Gray asked Seldon in front of the cameras if he had dived at the end of the bout. I would have to say it was more of an elbow that, that must have touched a nerve or something, but the first knockdown was definitely not a fake. Seldon, however, insisted that he hadn't trained for 12 weeks, only to take a dive in the ring. As great as the boxer Floyd Mayweather was, his exhibition fight against the Japanese fighter Tenshin Nasukawa was nothing short of a laughable event. The retired American obliterated Nasukawa in the first round of a bout that headlined the Risen 14 show at the Saitama Arena in Saitama, Japan. Mayweather smiling, Nasukawa serious. Nasukawa looked completely out of his depth in his first boxing fight, swinging wildly in an attempt to land a blow on his opponent. One landed on the glove of Mayweather, and that appeared to sting him into action. Mayweather quickly returned with a sharp flurry to deck the home favorite with a short left to the body. Floyd Mayweather dropping his opponent. Oh my goodness. The fight descended into farce when another dig from Mayweather left Nasuaka staggering back like a drunk before falling for a second time. After another half-hearted punch to the side of the head, the kickboxer fell for a third time. His corner saw enough and threw in the towel after 136 seconds of the fight. The match and its conclusion sparked outrage. Somebody Mayweather, Nasukawa's having an extreme ass corner, has thrown in the towel. According to reports, Mayweather got $9 million for the bout, even if Mayweather was on a trip for a good payday. A legend like him should have respected the sport better, even if it was just an exhibition fight. His antics inside the ring while disrespecting his opponent and showboating indicated that the fight was just a show for the fans in Japan. It was all about entertainment. We had fun. Boxing is the ultimate test of individual courage, but this has always left it open to exploitation. Boxing is two people in a ring, so one person taking a dive is a much easier thing to control than an entire baseball team. In today's corrupt world, losing a fight can be more profitable than winning. 
But what really matters is integrity and respect. It's up to the fighters to decide whether to fix a fight in their favor or choose to fight fairly and honestly for the millions of fans out there. To control the fixing, the governing bodies and the boxing councils have to do better to save the sport. The sport is already facing many problems in terms of bad judging, corruption, and a plethora of weight divisions. There are too many champions in the same weight class, and the surprising thing is that the days are gone when the best boxers used to face the best competition. The game has changed, and promoters no longer want tough competitions in order to save their fighters and keep the money pouring in. This is the reason that the sport of MMA is exploding nowadays as compared to boxing. Strict measures need to be implemented to save this sport from becoming a humiliation, but for now, boxing seems far off from what it was back in the glory days of Ali, Foreman, Tyson, and Lewis.